In this video, I'm going to teach you how to make more time in your day to get things done. Coming up next. Hi everybody, my name is Dee Burks and this is Retirement Rescue, where we talk about how to make money, save money, and live well in retirement. Well, one of the biggest issues people have is they never seem to have enough time in their day. How do you fix that? Well, we're going to talk about several simple ways you can create more time. Now, one of the first things we have to address is, are you doing too much? For almost everybody, it's yes. Okay, how much of that stuff that you're doing now is really adding to your life? That's the second big question. You know, making time isn't about somehow magically putting 26 hours in your day where everyone else has 24. No, it is about creating priorities. I mean, if you have in your day and you look at what you're doing every day, and the things that you want to get done require 23 hours a day and you only have 24, you have a problem and it's not that you don't have enough time. You're doing way too many things that possibly aren't adding to your life. Same is true with money, by the way. I can't tell you the number of people who say, I just can't make a budget. I just can't make things even out. It's like, well, if you have $100, but you're trying to spend $150, then you need to look at a different problem here. It's not that you don't have enough money. You're trying to spend it on too many things. So let's look at that side of the equation. Let's look at where you're spending your time. Now, the first thing most people do will say, well, I just need to get organized. If I was organized, I would have more time. And there is some truth to that. You can organize your life better. We all can. So that's always a possibility that you look and you organize what you're doing. Now, there's several things involved in organization, but the main one should be deletion. What can you delete? Now, you've probably heard of the Pareto Principle that 20% of your effort is actually producing 80% of your results. And that's very true when it comes to time. There is probably 20% of things you're doing in your day that really have to be done. The other 80% don't really have to be done, or they don't have to be done right then, or they don't have to be done in the way you're currently doing them. That 80% is what we're going to be looking at. Now, when you make a list, and I want you to go through and make a list of everything that you're doing, everything you've done this last week, everything you've got coming up this week. Look at those lists. Every single person can delete at least 10% of the things they're doing. 10%. Look at your list, take off 10%. How do you do that? Number one, delete the things that aren't adding to your life. These could be things like waiting in line, sitting in your car, waiting at a doctor's office, uh, going to the grocery store multiple times during the day, spending a lot of time driving. We all kind of spend a lot of time driving from here to there. How can we make that more efficient? One of the ways that I do that is I take a set time in the week, usually several days a week, two to three days, depending on the week, and I set that time to, quote, run errands. Now, if you live in a large city, running errands could be an all-day event. But better you do it all at once and do it efficiently rather than running back and forth to your house numerous times a day and spending an entire week doing it. So think about how to be efficient. Can you go to the post office, go pick up what you need at the store, go to a doctor's appointment, do that all in one trip? Can you consolidate those things? If you are sitting in line to pick up kids, let's say, if you are sitting at a doctor's office, can you be making lists? Can you be uh, writing your grocery list? Can you be uh, making appointments for something else? Can you be spending that time more functionally than just scrolling through your phone wasting that hour or 45 minutes? Now, the third thing I want you to do is to evaluate your downtime. 
Everybody looks at downtime a little differently. For some people, that's the time they're actually sitting in front of the television doing nothing. For other people, they consider their downtime not working time, but when they're actually doing a lot of chores at home. So look at your downtime. How can you consolidate that? Do you need to clean your, your house every single day? Some people do. It's their thing. Go for quality versus quantity. Maybe instead of doing laundry twice a week, you do it once a week. Maybe instead of grocery shopping two or three times a week, you do it once. Or once every two weeks would be even more efficient. Number one, you'll probably sp spend less money. And number two, it keeps you out of the store. It keeps you from making those multiple trips. You're not wasting gas. You're not wasting time. You know, your most valuable asset is actually your time. And when you're spending that time just running here, running there, and not functionally doing anything that adds to your life, that is precious time that is wasted. So when you look at downtime, look at that as time you can spend on you. Even if you're just sitting on the deck watching the sunset, doing something that fills your well, fills your soul, um, gives you that feeling of peace, that is much more important than if your bed's made. That is much more important. Now you can do both things, but you need to do them efficiently. One of the things I also do is use the five-year rule. Is this going to matter in five years? For the vast majority of things you do, the answer is no. It's not going to matter in five years if there's a dandelion in your front yard. It's not going to matter in five years if you walk the dog at 8 o'clock or 10 o'clock. It's not going to matter. And getting stressed and upset about little things actually wastes a great deal of our time. We sit and we fume instead of either being productive or just enjoying our downtime. And the last thing I'm going to talk about is something that women in particular have a hard time with. Learn to delegate. Learn to delegate, even if they don't do it perfectly. If you have pink underwear because your son did the laundry, that's a learning experience for him, and you have pink underwear. Just roll with it. It's not going to matter in five years. It's absolutely not going to matter. You know, if you send your husband to the grocery store and he gets the wrong brand of butter, and he picks up, you know, wine coolers instead of wine, and he gets the wrong spices, so what? So what? It's not that big a deal. And we spend so much of our time trying to control everything and everyone in our lives that we feel exhausted. Controlling other people and trying to control everything that goes on in our household is exhausting. Let it go. Enlist the kids to help. If your five-year-old wants to help, sweet, let her. If that means those dust bunnies stay there another week, so what? So what? Nobody cares. And the fact that you care so much is only hurting you. Nobody cares. And this is especially true of moms. Don't worry about, you know, not bringing homemade cupcakes, you know, to the preschool party uh, like every other mom's going to do. Just swing by the grocery store and get some. It's not that big a deal. It's really not. And in five years, I promise you, all those moms that killed themselves trying to bring something homemade will come up to you at one of your kids' games and say, Oh, I wish I'd just gone by the grocery store. That was just dumb to be so hung up on that. Now let's talk about the to-do list. We all have to-do lists, and they're very functional, and they're very good to get things done. But we can really overdo that to-do list. We can create a miserable environment for not only ourselves, everyone else in our family. If you have a to-do list that you feel like has to get done, you are making people's lives miserable. Stop it. Just stop it. And you know, it kind of begs the question, why do you care so much? Why do you care to the point that you're making yourself exhausted and you're making yourself miserable? Focus on the things that bring you happiness. And focus on the things that you really have to get done. And all those other little errands and things that are killing your time. The most precious thing you have. Let them go. Let them go. They're not worth it. And in five years, you won't even remember what they were. So now's the time to look at what you're doing, how you're doing it, and really talk to the people in your life. Um, they would love to help you most of the time. 
They may not help you perfectly, but that's a learning opportunity for you. Learn how to accept help from other people gratefully, even if it's not perfect, and just let it go. You know, I think every one of us can look back, especially, you know, over 50, you can look back at those early years of your life and realize how wound up you got about things that absolutely did not matter. I was really wound up that my kids get good grades and they do things right and they do... You know what? I could have been a way more relaxed parent and I wish I had been. My kids are great. They were great then. They would have still been great. They just might have enjoyed their childhood a little bit more. If they did not have a parent that was so intense. So enlist help. Stop trying to be perfect. And organize your day and your life only around the things that are truly important, that 20%, let the, let, let the rest go. Just let it go. So, if you've enjoyed this video, please click the subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.